Yeah. Topic is connecting to databases and whatever you have on your mind right now. I'm always thinking don't be too far because always we have uh, SQL servers, big machines or big databases in mind. Louder. Louder? Yeah. Um, <coughs> just um, again, if, if the title is connecting to databases, we always think about the big things. And I'm always forced to uh, uh, make people think that people, uh, projects usually start small. So we're in a small talk image and we can all uh, do all lots of things. So we don't, uh, if we spend <coughs> too early, too much time in uh, configuring database servers, uh, spending time into migration schemes of objects and stuff. So we just move away from our own problem and turn towards the uh, persistent problems databases introduce. So if we start too early thinking about databases, we could end in a mismatch because we spend the time not on our own problem, but on the problem of a deployment of a database. So we could try something, another approach, which could be concentrate on our own problem, have our own decent model, and postpone the heavy stuff that it, that's coming anyway. Because probably you're not going to be the next Facebook, but the fear is there from the beginning. Everybody thinks like this, oh my god, if I have one million users at the same time, what, what shall I do? But as we are, have this lovely image, um, we just think about what it's, why I need a database at all. So the first thing, I need to persist it because the main memory is volatile. So the battery is off and the image crashes. I, don't, I know it never happens, but uh, sometimes it does. Um, so then your data would be lost. So you need to persist it in any way. The next level will be probably you, get, you like to share your data. So an image is just like, it's one blob. It's hard to get the data from one place to another. So would be some action of externalizing it from the image to give the data away. Next problem might be that if you keep the data in the image, the main memory will is restricted. You don't have that much main memory. So if you have more data, the main memory, there is no option then to externalize the data anyway. And the last thing, the success case, is that you're having that much load on your application because it's so successful that you need a lot of images, a lot of stuff going on to uh, serve more users and make them happy. Well, one of my lovely databases, it's called the Faro database. It has manual transactions, like uh, a save menu, or you can use it uh, in a program can just save the whole image. So that's always the thing if I try to tell people how to start a project with Faro. It's just care about your model, create your objects, your test objects, whatever you do, a web application. And if you need to persist, open the world menu, hit save, and you're done. You can just quit the image, you come back, and the data is still there, so it's persisted. So there's no need at that stage where you have a handful of objects. You don't, you, there's no benefit of having an SQL engine, a MongoDB, or anything else. So it's just keeping keeping you at the right spot of your project. <coughs> but as I told you, the, the image might break. Or you want to upgrade a new image, download a new image. You want to have your data back uh, out of the old image into the new one. You want to give your data to another person. So you should write just the data outside of the image. You're still not on, the, on a database level, as you might think of, with the query language, you just of externalize it. Faro comes with a wonderful tool, it's called Fuel, uh, and it's just capable of a really easy way to externalize your whole graph. So every object that's connected to another one will be just dumped out to disk. It's a one-liner, so you just take any root or any, any object and you, you put it the whole thing in the file. So, next problem is solved. The data is outside, you can share it, you can migrate it to a new image. But there is a book chapter. Huh? Oh, yes. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. Next thing, probably you collect that much data that you have more than a memory, or you need to bury things, or things get slow, whatever. 
there's something like um, there's a lot of uh, connections in Faro to database like NQLite. It's just a tiny, tiny C library which enables the, the whole Faro image to be a key value store. So, and the only thing you have to do is to uh, PQ database open on a file. And then you can just uh, have dictionary like accessors to, to get and uh, set values on it. And you can just have millions of objects in there. Then the next problem will be probably this guy, which makes it um, really slow. The fun thing is that it that it also parses transactions to write data on this, and that it has that it includes a scripting engine it's called JX9. It's a JavaScript kind of scripting uh, based on a JSON format. So you can even have JavaScript-like expressions and uh, can be evaluated in the database. If it if we are successful or if we need a, a bigger deployment and we need um, we still don't want to care too much about mapping our objects to a persistence layer a file so with all the, the other things you don't have to make that much of a work to, to put your data into uh, <coughs> into files or externalize and Mongo is probably one of the easiest way to go on the bigger scale so Mongo I, I assume, who doesn't know Mongo? DB? Okay. That's, okay, Mongo is really capable of doing a lot of, a lot of stuff and it has a lot of indexes and stuff. And the only thing you have to do if you're, if you're going in a configuration browser, you install Voyage Mongo. And then you just set your, if you just call the database, it just assumes it, you have a standard installation on localhost. So otherwise you, you uh, uh, give the host and the port. And you just say, I have, a, I have a Mongo repository, that's, <coughs> that's the, the domain setting in the image. And then you can, every class, you can just um, uh, create an instance and call save on it. If you, uh, if you remember that you have on my class, there's only a class accessor, it's called is voyage root. And then you return true, so voyage knows that this is a root object, it can store itself in the database, so you're done. It just create objects. Mongo will serialize uh, everything in JSON, um, and you have kind of cycles. You can have really big graphs. There's all signs, uh, all kinds of uh, stuff you can do. Um, then you just take your data in a database, and you're done. If you have, if you need to tweak it, Mongo usually does infers all the types and all the stuff by itself. So if you don't have special things to do, you just usually you don't 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 do anything. If you like the collection or, or anything named differently. If you like to have nested object loaded uh, when the root object is loaded, then you just add a Madrid description for this slot, because basically uh, Mongo hears <coughs> the Madrid script, sort of Madrid description by itself. But if you if you implement one, it will just take yours. So you can just my collection name or there's something like be eager if you. Uh, refer to another object and you want to load it in one one stroke not to just have a proxy and then repeat it afterwards so it's really easy and you have a, a, a small talkish kind of a, a selection protocol or collection protocol uh, is if you have a lot of objects in the in the database you can just have uh, uh, varies uh, with blocks like we have in all uh, collection protocols so it's very easy to do. So, uh, and MongoDB has a lot of features, like um, there's geo indexes and stuff. Um, there's hard stuff you cannot do with the block logic, so you can still have some JSON-like uh, dictionary constructs. It's not pretty, but uh, the really hard stuff you will uh, get with the dictionary stuff. So, but that's a really good option. So, I, pers I, I use this all the time, every day, because it's really nice to do. And you can have a lot of images, so, so you can scale to a uh, different setting before you have the need to scale inside Mongo, but it's also transparent because it will be another kind of installation of the database, but the access from Trouble will be more or less the same. That's basically is it. I just wanted to, you to uh, give a quick overview that there's, uh, well, the mission is not going too big at the beginning, but 
there's also a lot of database uh, connectivity options in Faro. Another one will be FreeAC. This is a part, um, it's a Faro part to access the React database, which is maybe you can make it this is one scale more high than the Mongo because you need at least three nodes to run it and you, it's like the DynamoDB Amazon does. It's the same, the same paper basically, they implemented it. Uh, and FreeAG is just something like um, make it more easy to access FreeAG because FreeAG is accessed uh, over HTTP, so it's easy anyway. But you map objects and stuff into a document to put into React um, is done by this. This is also something that hopefully comes with the next version of Voyage 2. Um, because Voyage Mongo, as I said, is just Voyage is the, the mapping the mapping framework to, to put <coughs> objects into JSON or into a database. And Mongo is just the one implementation of a backend. So Voyage can be uh, can be much more um, to access a lot of databases. And React is one of the most prominent. Maybe you have better ideas or another ideas what backends uh, should be integrated. You should tell Esteban. <laughs> uh, yeah, <coughs> and there's a lot of other things. Sandstone DB is something like um, an approach to uh, have this Ruby Active Record style of um, database persistence, which is um, uh, something implemented under. There's a, a prep layer kind of. Probably somebody of you know. It's just that you you have the whole graph on disk, and you just you write you, you load everything in, in the image, and if you change something, you write. Especially uh, one one file in the on the disk, and you just read it after the image start. SQLite uh, is it's uh, similar to Anculite, but it's an SQL query interface. Uh, yeah, that's all for the easiest on and no SQL options. And uh, I would like. Thank you.